Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're taking a look at memory scaling performance with the new Ryzen 9 7950X 3D. And after recently doing the same thing with the Ryzen 7 7700X, I found that the standard Zen 4 processors are extremely sensitive to memory bandwidth and latency, seeing on average 17% greater gaming performance using DDR5 6000 CL30 opposed to DDR5 5200 CL40. This is an issue for Zen 4, as Intel's Raptor Lake architecture isn't nearly as memory sensitive. The Core i9-1300K, for example, saw just a 3% performance improvement from 5200 to 6000 DDR5 memory, making Zen 4 around 6 times more memory sensitive in that example. Mind you, Ryzen sensitivity to memory performance isn't a new thing, and this has been an issue since Zen was first introduced back in 2017. The best solution to this issue was discovered a year ago when AMD introduced the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, increasing the L3 cache capacity over the standard model by 3 times to 96 megabytes. Now, for our day one 5800X 3D review, I found that on average, going from DDR4 3200 to 3800 only improved performance by 2%, but I did note that in more demanding games, the margin could be as much as 5%, which admittedly for Zen 3 was still quite a small difference. Now the reason why the 5800X 3D is far less memory sensitive than the 5800X was entirely down to the larger L3 cache, which reduced how often the CPU had to work out of system memory. Of course, this isn't a permanent fix for Zen 3's DRAM latency issue as games continue to become more and more demanding, but it does mean the 3D vCache model will always have a significant performance advantage but in future we're likely to continue to benefit more and more from faster memory. So the same will also be true of the 7950X 3D. It's possible memory performance will be less relevant for this part today when compared to the 7950X, but without question you'll still want the best memory possible as future games will become more demanding than those we see today. In any case, I want to see if and how memory scaling differs between Zen 4 and Zen 4 3D vCache, in today's games, so let's go look into that. And just quickly, this testing was conducted using our new AM5 test system built inside the Corsair 4000D Airflow case, using the IQ H150i Elite LCD XT liquid cooler, RM1200X shift power supply, and 4TB MP600 Pro XT SSD. So a big thank you to Corsair for helping us out with all of that hardware. And also used for testing is the GeForce 4090 at 1080p, and if you'd like to learn more about why we test at this low resolution, I'll provide a link to a video in the description that explains this test method. The Ryzen processors were paired with the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master and the Core i9-1300K with the MSI MPG Z790 Carbon Wi-Fi. Okay, let's get into the graphs. First up, we have Watch Dogs Legion, and here, the 7950X 3D saw a 10% increase in performance from the base spec 5200 memory to our 6000 CL30 test memory. And that's still quite a large performance uplift, especially given that the 13900K saw just a 2% increase, though interestingly performance did fall away much more sharply when pairing the Intel CPU with DDR5 4800. However, when compared to the 7700X, the 3D vCache enabled 7950X did scale much better as the 7700X saw a 19% performance improvement when upgrading from 5200 to low latency 6000 memory. So this is a clear sign that the larger L3 cache is helping to minimize Zen 4's reliance on memory performance. Previously, we found that Horizon Zero Dawn isn't a very memory sensitive title, as the 7700X saw just a 7% boost when upgrading from DDR5 5200 to 6000. That was by far one of the smallest performance uplifts we observed. That margin was halved with the 7950X 3D to just 3%, again providing more clear evidence that the 3D vCache part is far less reliant on system memory and much closer to the scaling behavior of the Raptor Lake CPU. Now, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a very CPU demanding title that saw performance slashed on the 7700X when using the slower memory. DDR5 6000 CL30 was 18% faster than 5200 CL40, and that's a significant performance difference for memory to make. Yet the same memory saw the Core i9 performance improve by a mere 3%. That's a startling performance difference that was somewhat replicated by the 3D vCache enabled 7950X 3D as that saw just a 5% improvement when moving from 5200 to 6000 memory. Here we're witnessing very similar performance trends in the Rift Breaker. 
Here the 13900K was a percent faster using the 6000 memory, while the 7700X saw a massive 17% improvement. The 7950X 3D on the other hand, that saw a mere 2% uplift, so basically the same scaling witness with the Intel processor, and that is a massive improvement. So in this example, the 7950X 3D's reliance on memory was heavily reduced. Moving on, we have a Plague Tale Requiem, and this is a new, very CPU demanding game, and it's yet another example where the 7700X really struggled with the higher latency, lower bandwidth memory, seeing an almost 20% uplift when moving from 5200 to 6000. The 13900K, on the other hand, that just saw a mere 3% uplift, and the 7950X 3D, a 6% uplift, which is twice that of the Core i9, but roughly three times less than the 7700X. Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered is another new and very CPU demanding game, and in this example, the Ryzen 7 7700X saw a massive 21% performance improvement when moving from DDR5 5200 to 6000. Intel's 13900K on the other hand saw just a 4% uplift, again proving that Zen 4 is significantly more memory sensitive. However, the new 7950X 3D, that saw a mere 2% increase, making it less memory sensitive than even Intel's 13900K in this example. Though, like the 13900K, performance did drop off with DDR5 4800, something we didn't see as much with the 7700X, instead performance appeared to just bottom out much sooner. And last up we have the Callisto Protocol, and here the 13900K saw a 5% improvement when upgrading from 5200 to 6000 memory, whereas the 7700X saw a much more substantial 14% improvement. Meanwhile the 7950X 3D reduced that margin to just 7%, half that of the 7700X, and remarkably similar to the 13900K. Now when comparing the average performance just seen across the 7 games tested, we find that on average, the 13900K saw just a 3% performance improvement when moving from 5200 to 6000 memory, whereas the 7700X saw a far more substantial 17% increase. The 7950X 3D on the other hand saw a mere 4% increase when going from 5200 to 6000, so a very similar margin to that of the 13900K, and again this highlights just how less reliant these 3D vCache chips are when compared to these standard models. Also, I haven't mentioned this yet, but I'm sure it'll come up in the comments, so I'll address it now. The Zen 4 processors don't typically work above DDR5 6000, so that's why we've only tested up to 6000. All Zen 4 CPUs will work at DDR5 6000, providing the motherboard's BIOS is in order. Some will do 6200, and the best silicon will be able to do 6400, but that is the max speed. And we only like to benchmark conditions that all silicon can support, which is why we max out Raptor Lake at 7200 and Zen 4 at 6000. So, as we found with the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D a year ago now, 3D vCache CPUs are far less memory sensitive when compared to the standard models. Also, for those of you wondering if scaling is somehow different between the single and dual CCD Zen 4 processors, the answer is no. But to prove that, I went back and ran the 7950X through a number of the games, and here's a look at the shadow of the Tomb Raider results, one of the more memory sensitive tests included in this video. In short, frame rate performance and memory scaling is virtually identical between the 7950X and 7700X, and we saw this in all of the games we looked at. So the good news is you'll run into less memory related performance issues with the 7950X 3D when compared to the 7950X or any other Zen 4 part without 3D vCache. The bad news, if you can call it that, is that none of this really matters, as we don't recommend you pair an expensive AM5 processor with anything other than DDR5 6000 CL30 memory. Ideally the G School Triton Z5 Neo stuff, as it ensures the best performance for Zen 4 now and in the future. Not only that, but premium DDR5 memory is now very affordable. Basically it's cheaper than an X670 motherboard and much cheaper than a CPU like the 7950X 3D, so why bother saving a few bucks on the memory? For example, the cheapest DDR5 5232GB kit costs $115. It's a Team T-Force Vulcan CL40 kit. But for $20 more, you can buy a G-School Flarex X5 DDR5 6000 CL36 kit, and then for an additional $10, you can get G-School's Ripjaws S5 DDR5 6000 CL32 kit. 
And look, the premium stuff we use for testing it does cost $175, but you can get a similar spec kit such as the Team T-Force Delta RGB DDR5 6000 Cell 30 for $155, or the $145 G-Skill Ripjaws S5 DDR5 5600 Cell 28, which can be tuned up and made even faster than the stuff we tested with. But really, when you consider the fact that the premium G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo DDR5 6000 Cell 30 memory that we use for testing currently costs just $60 more than base spec DDR5 5200, it's a no-brainer. Do yourself a favor and get the good stuff, regardless of whether or not you buy a 3D V-Cache processor. As for memory tuning, sadly, I didn't have time to delve into that for this content, but it is something that I'll cover in the near future. But spoiler alert, based on what we've seen here, you should really only expect a very small performance boost of a few frames for these 3D V-Cache parts. So it's almost certainly going to be a non-event. And with that, I am going to wrap this one up. And I will be back soon, though, with some big CPU benchmarks. So make sure you are subscribed for that. Also, if you'd like to become a Harbour Box community member, we do have Floatplane or Patreon. Links for those in the video description. Either one of those will give you access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams with Tim and myself, Q&As, and behind-the-scenes content. So, yeah, check that out if you're interested. But if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.